hey, Justin, hey, checked out this uh, horror film of yours, uh, The Seventh Day. Great. Hey, so um, so this is, I want to say this is your sophomore film, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a, fe it's a feature film, and it's it's still in the same horror genre as before. What what is about this genre that you you like so much? Um, it just I, you know I, I stumbled into it really. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't a horror uh, person growing up. Um, I I grew up in a in a in a sort of stricter household as far as what we were allowed to watch. Um, so I wasn't really allowed to watch it. Uh, and then by the time I probably could have watched some horror and I, I would go to friends' houses and they'd put on like Friday the 13th and then I'd, you know, have nightmares for weeks. Um, so, and I, and I'm someone who's pretty much scared of everything. Uh, so I struggled with it, uh, for a long time. And it wasn't until I was in film school, uh, at Columbia, uh, university in New York that my directing teacher in my last directing class sort of gave me a nudge in the horror direction. Um, I think he was just trying to get me to break out of whatever routine or, or you know, I'd fallen into and wanted me to try something new. And it just clicked, uh, you know, on a sort of emotional and, and um, creative level, I think I found... I think I can sort of tend to be a bit earnest mm -hmm. um, as a person, as a filmmaker. And so um, marrying that, and, and, and I've also had some dark experiences, you know, and, and, and sort of um, horror allowed me to express myself in a way that just felt very natural. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I love it now, wouldn't turn back. <laughs> well then then what actually sparked you to you know to write the story for <laughs> the seventh day what, what was it a movie was was it a vivid dream <laughs> what was it for you? uh it was actually a series of articles that i happened upon i was you know i had finished my first film and it had sort of done its run and i was considering what to write next and um and I and it was late 2018, sometime I think in December. I was I was sort of surfing around online, and um, I had recently read a Malachi Martin book about he's a he's a famous exorcist, and he wrote a few books about his experiences and about exorcism. And so you know, my mind was sort of in that that um, area, and then I happened upon these articles um, that were talking about this phenomenon that was really happening at the time or I maybe, st I guess still is, uh, that over the past 10 years, um, there's been an, a 70% increase in the demand for exorcisms um, in the, from the general public. Um, and so the Catholic Church, in order to meet that demand, started teaching the right again and opened up new academies in Chicago. And so a lot of the stuff that the archbishop sort of talks about in that first meeting in the archbishop's office in the movie, that's real. Um, and so there were all these, you know, young priests training. And, and, and so the goal was to have every diocese in the U.S. Um, was to have its own dedicated exorcist, um, which, you know, the public wouldn't know who it was and doesn't, evidently. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I would assume by now, since that was several years ago, that they would have met that goal. Um, so I found that really interesting. And that's sort of important to my process, I think, is that... Um, is that something sort of exists within a larger context. And, uh, and the idea that people would turn to, you know, would turn to exorcism and, and um, in, in, in these moments of, of sort of growing anxiety and fear and distrust, um, while that's not my personal experience specifically, um, I, was able, I, I thought it mirrored my reality in in a in a in a way um you know i also felt those things over the past decade and 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 still do and um and so that's sort of that's always sort of my way in you know with, with a film as if i if i can sort of see it in a larger context uh that's exciting to me um and then i like to with my films you know whether it's new for other people i always when i'm writing something i want to feel like a, a, I have, it's something I haven't seen before. Um, and, uh, and there's this 
you know, uh, in exorcist films and, and in exorcisms in, in general, evidently. Uh, you know, there's the exorcist and the apprentice or the, or the assistant. Um, and so there's this mentor mentee relationship. Um, and I, I don't know the idea, the, the thought of training day, the movie training day, which I really loved popped yeah. into my head. And I just thought, gee, I wonder, you know, if, if an exorcism film could sort of fit within that world and that structure. Um, and so I started to play and explore. With, with the process of the exorcism itself, because obviously movie, several movies have done this before. Did you just rely upon, you know, those previous movies or did you do, do like your own research or try to enroll into exorcism school? <laughs> I don't think they take me. Uh, I, I relied on several different things. You know, there's there's an element of I so uh, Malachi Martin's book Hostage to the Devil I uh, found very informative um, and and helped a lot in my writing process. Um, I also did look at past films, some for informational, some it's sort of like what I don't want to do. Um, you know, there are some things like in a lot of exorcism films, you, there's a lot of, you know, furniture flying around and, um, you know, uh, things like that. And, and, and actually in my reading, I noticed, I, I read that, well, it's actually more common practice that the exorcist would clear the room of anything that could, um, be, you know, so even, even in the opening scene where, where there's a piece of jewelry that, that, um, uh, sort of, you know, comes into play, uh, usually, uh, that wouldn't be allowed. Um, so I went with a, with a bit more of a sparse, uh, set deck in a way, because that, that seemed, uh, from my reading and from my research is actually more naturally what it would be. Um, you'd have as little as possible in there that could be used against the, the priests, um, as weapons or, or you know, be weaponized to, against them. Um, you know, and I also was really fortunate to have a, a, a props, um, uh, a professional on my, on my team who, uh, had a friend who worked, I think, in a sacristy and, and was very well versed in some of these things. And so it was sort of an on the fly resource, um, if we, you know, ever had any questions about the sort of, um, you know, uh, the authenticity of something we were doing. Absolutely. Well, I could tell you, I've watched it. It's horrifying. And I think you <laughs> have a great uh, cast with um, Maria and, and Guy. So once again, hey, congratulations for the seventh day. And I can't Thank wait you. to see uh, your next film after this. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey. Um, Justin, next time, all right? I, I will sure. definitely speak to you on, on your next film, whatever that would be. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much for the time. Hey, thank you. Bye now. Bye.